A mascot tower's owner has broken down at an inquiry into building standards as he detailed his family's experience since being evacuated from the cracked apartment block. An inquiry began at New South Wales Parliament yesterday into the regulation of building standards, quality and disputes after a series of incidents, some well-documented incidents too. So joining us now is Deputy Chair of the Committee at Shooters, Farmers and Fishers, New South Wales MP Robert Borsak. Um, Robert Borsak, thank you very much for, for joining us today. There were some quite powerful statements that, that came from that building inquiry yesterday. Does this humanise the problem? I think it very much does. We had uh, four inquiries yesterday. Uh, we did five hours' worth of inquiry. That was just on the first day. And these residents, especially Mr Vital, of course, as you say, broke down in the inquiry. We had Mr Chen there, both of them from Mascot Towers, both of them evacuated, both of them living on the government penny at the moment because they're being subsidised to rent premises somewhere by the government, yet there is no potential solution coming from the government as to what's going to happen in the long term. What's the solution in your view? <sighs> well, it, look, it's a little bit early to tell, but at the moment they're talking at least $10 million uh, for mitigation of the damage, but no-one really knows what's causing it all. So it could be up... To, they were saying, Mr Chen, I think, said it was could be three, three or four times that. So in the end it might be a situation where the government has to step in and either buy the building off everybody at market value or and demolish it or uh, do something to try to fix what's going on. And I don't see them at the moment. The government's in hiding in relation to this thing. They're not saying anything. Well, uh, well, as it stands at the moment, I mean, listening to some of those statements, I mean, some of these lives, these residents' lives, are ruined. Completely. Like, they've got these, these investments where they've sp they would have spent more than a million dollars. Mm. That's, that's worth nothing now, basically, and they can't even get insurance. That's right. Like, who, who would insure them? Well, they can't sell, they can't move in, they can't go out. They, they're still paying rates and taxes. They're still paying strata levies, mm. uh, fees, for example. I mean, the, the whole thing is a fiasco, the way it's all panned out. And I, I fear that what we're going to see in the longer term is uh, a, an, an evolution of events that's going to make pink bats look like a walk in the park. Mm. Uh, because we're effectively starting to see a picture now of an industry that is totally unregulated. It's cowboy stuff. If it's cowboy stuff and people are in this position, as you so eloquently uh, put, Pete, there must be so many uh, cases out there where residents are doing all they can to keep these uh, problems mm. quiet because mm. their asset devalues so strongly. Do you have any idea about how big this problem is? At the moment, we don't. I can't say that I do. All I know is I've heard anecdotally there are literally thousands of problems out there, uh, but to, to, you know, to spend time and get, a, get them dug out, it's, it's almost impossible at this early stage. We've still got another two or three hearing days to come up and more people to hear. But what worried me yesterday was we heard from Fair Trading and they had quite a lot to say, but in the end they weren't addressing the real issues. We, could, we invited the Minister to, to attend and come and give evidence. He refused to. And we can't compel a Minister to come and give evidence. Why? What was his reasons? Well, I'd like to know that. What is he hiding? Why didn't he turn up? Uh, you read in the newspapers that he says he's got more legislation coming and he's got the fix coming. Well, that's fine, Mr Anderson. Come and tell us about it. Tell us how you're going to fix this. I, th I fear that they don't know what they're going to do to fix all this. Uh, another uh, hot issue uh, with the New South Wales government at the moment is the abortion debate. Uh, Warren Mundine yesterday said that this could be Gladys Berejiklian's greyhounds. Is that your view? Yeah, I, I think it's panning out to be that. I, I think the way they've handled it has been extremely bad. Uh, what they should have done, as everyone's been saying, is it should have been put on the table and dealt with properly. Why does uh, a left-leaning inner-city um, independent get the rails run on something like this? The government knew all about what was going on. Mr Hazard and the full resources of the Health Department have been in there preparing this bill for who knows how long. It's been secretive. Uh, if they really wanted to do this properly and it wasn't part of a dirty deal done with uh, Greenwich and the other left-wing crossbenchers, then why didn't they just put it on the table? We have a proper discussion about it. I'm sure if they had the numbers, it would have happened anyway. The biggest uh, problem seems to be that this would create a loophole where you can abort a child uh, 22 weeks if you don't like the gender of that child. Mm. What can you do uh, in the Senate? Will you try to move amendments? Uh, will you push the government to do so? Is that the, the one and only concern you have? Well, look, there are a number of concerns that I've got. Um, in our party, just like most, it's been a conscience vote. Uh, what I'm concerned to do is I will be moving an amendment to try to prevent a selection for abortion based on sex. 
Uh, there's just no way that I'm going to ever agree to that. Um, I actually came at this, and I still do have an open mind in relation to this, but uh, also conscientious objection by doctors. That should be covered as well. There's a myriad of things. I've got a pile of paper this high on all the amendments that were moved in the lower house that failed, and we'll be looking very carefully to move those in the upper house. But, there, but isn't it true that there's, there's that argument that there is this, there's a widespread activity of aborting a baby based on gender after, two, after 22 weeks. Um, because women can get a gender test, it's called a harmony test, at 10 weeks. So, so they know well in advance that it's either going to be a boy or a girl. Well, that's right. So isn't it inaccurate to say that there's going to be this rush on after 22 well, weeks? Well, look, I don't think there's going to be a rush on after 22 weeks, but that, that decision can be made at any time, as you say. Uh, I think the issue after 22 weeks is that uh, people assert, and I, and I agree with it, that a baby can actually live outside the womb, womb after 22, 24 weeks, given the technology we have. So that's just not based only on, on gender. What worries me is that babies will be able to abort it, be aborted right up till birth. And what I would rather see is those babies... Sorry, those mothers cancelled, and if they still don't want to have the child, have the child, but then put it out for adoption. So what would your amendment be, specifically, in terms of gender selection at no time at all? That's right. And, and I, what, what, what I would look to do is try to have the, uh, the woman, uh, the mother, potential mother, uh, properly counselled so that she understands the implications of what she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. There are very, very few uh, adoptions in New South Wales these days. I think it would be better off having those children born, have them alive and have them brought up uh, in loving and caring environment. And that's not to say that the parent is doing it for the wrong reasons either. I just think that we could take a much more caring uh, approach to this whole thing rather than just dispensing uh, with a foetus because for, for social reasons, for example, that's one of the reasons that's there. I mean, we've got this crazy unholy alliance of the Animal Justice Party putting the lives of animals ahead of human beings, and I just, I just can't understand that.